All right, guys, so let's now talk about my top three under the radar spinning rods in the Mega Bass line. These are three rods that I love, that I use all the time, that get overshadowed by some of the big players like the, the Windbuster wind that we talk about all the time, <laughs> right? But these are three rods that you should definitely pay attention to. Within the Mega Bass line, you hear things, you know, Windbuster, you hear Ronin all the time, right? You hear Whip Snake. Like those are the three that are thrown around but there's so many spinning rods. I mean, there's probably 50 or 60 different models of spinning rods through their line. These three are definitely three you should pay attention to. So if you want to hear about my three under the radar rods in Mega Bass, let's do it. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the Hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just want to elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. All right, welcome back my friends. I am Ben with the Hookup Tackle, AKA the Tackle Otaku on Instagram. Once again, being joined by my buddy, Jeffrey the King, we're the Hookup Tackle USA. Jeff, spinning rods. My favorite. I know you love spinning <laughs> rods. Dude, don't, hey, uh, yeah. you posted a flick shake video. I did. I've seen you with spinning rods. <laughs> Yeah. I, I own one spinning rod. So we don't even make it anymore. <laughs> every time Jeff and I travel somewhere and <laughs> Jeff's filming and I'm shooting and I'm sucking, right? Like literally like I think back to like I don't know, our first Wisconsin trip. Oh, right? What a lovely trip. And it felt like forty hours went by and I hadn't caught a fish <laughs> yet. And I literally will put the rod down and Jeff will pick it up and make one cast and catch one. Like for a guy that hates a spinning rod so much. Yeah. Every time I see you pick one up, you catch a fish. There's something to it, man. Yeah, yeah. So maybe you were born to throw a spinning rod. I yeah. think that has to be it. I think that's it. <laughs> okay. Today we are going to highlight three rods in the Mega Bass line that I feel are under the radar. They're rods that deserve to be talked about. And we've spoken about all of these rods at some point or the other, but they're rods that tend to be talked about and then kind of overshadowed. I guess, right? That damn windbuster just overshadows yeah, everything. It's a killer, right? man. <clears throat> so, you know, within the P5 line, the windbuster is definitely kind of the star of that line. Within the Orochi line, I would say probably Whip Snake is definitely the star of that line, right? So, you know, those are the rods that we hear talked about, or, or Ronin, right? Because of the jerkbait rod. But these models that I'm gonna talk about today are important models to know about. And if you guys like using spinning, all three of these are key rods that you should definitely know about if you're building your Mega Bass rod arsenal up. So we're gonna start right here. Now this is a probably the newest of these to the line. It's been out, I guess about a year or so now. Jeff and I actually, I guess it has been about a year now, Jeff. It's coming we, up to about a year. That we used this for charges. the first time when they finalized this model. So this is, the Megabass Triza Ageha. <clears throat> now, if you guys are not familiar with the Triza line, <clears throat> get familiar with this because this is where Megabass's tech is headed, right? This is where I think rod technology is leading to. Now, 10 years ago, I would have never imagined sitting here talking about one of my favorite rods being a multi-piece rod, mm. right? But here we are. Trizas are all multi-piece rods. Now these are three-piece rods, okay? What's different about a Triza multi-piece rod versus an Orochi Triple X or, you know, another brand's multi-piece rod is instead of taking a rod, right? Instead of taking, for instance, this one is an F372 right? So instead of taking a 7-2 rod and just cutting it in three pieces and sticking it together, what they did with Triza is they set out to create three independent 
pieces that could come together to build a rod that they couldn't do in a single piece rod, right? So I don't know why that concept is new. Like mm -hmm. it makes so much sense when you think about it. But the first brand I know of to create three independent pieces to come together as one rod. So, you know, each piece is designed to do something different. The, the butt section is designed to give the rod stability, its backbone support. The middle piece is designed to fight the fish and give the rod its performance. And then the top piece is going to be basically your castability, your usability, your sensitivity, that kind of stuff, right? So the Ageha and the reason why this rod is in my line for ones you should definitely know about. The lure rating on this guy is 16th to a half ounce, <clears throat> okay? Now, what's important about this is this is probably the closest rod on the market to a wind buster, but it's a slightly different taper, right? So I remember when I first picked it up, I'm like, oh my God, it's just like a wind buster. Remember, that's what we were yep. saying, right? And, and granted, it specs out similar, it's 7.2, 7.2, right? But it's got a little bit softer tip. It's a little bit faster and more tip. So what it does is it allows load of lighter baits much better than a wind buster. I think the wind buster is great for like quarter and three eighth ounce stuff but it really struggles below that quarter because it wasn't built for that. It was built for three eighths, half ounce stuff. So it does that, you know, I guess what I would consider heavier stuff really, really well. But when you need to drop below that and throw a three sixteenth ounce or an eighth ounce, like say you want to throw a little Okashira screw head in a spark shad, Windbuster is not a great one for that, but you can do it on this. And we did it. And mm -hmm. we took these out to the Great Lakes. We threw a little screw head around, we threw a free rig around, threw a drop shot and it's sensitive you can feel the bottom contact, you can feel the bites exactly how you would expect, but you could also use this tip to throw those lighter baits like, you know, uh, a spark shad, Okashira screw head. So just a ton of versatility to this, plus you can travel with it. So if you wanna break it down, you can. So number one on my list of under the radar definitely goes to the Triza Ageha. All right, now speaking of kind of very similar type techniques, bottom contact specifically, for me, this is a rod that really gets overshadowed by the Windbuster, and it's a, it's a shame because mm. it's an amazing rod. This is the Destroyer P5 Baby Plugging. Okay, now, you guys have heard us talk about the Windbuster nine million times, and you guys know that Windbuster was built as a hard bait rod that ends up being incredibly sensitive for bottom contact. This is exactly the same. This is just on a lighter scale. Okay, so the baby plugging was originally designed as a plug rod, right? As a lure rod for throwing smaller baits like a spy bait, a smaller jerk bait, a smaller crank bait, right? So it's built with a lot of kind of flex in the tip so that it can load up some of those lighter weight hard baits. I'll spec it out real quick for you. It's 7 to 3 30 second to 7 16 of an ounce. So you can really throw some of those lighter baits in X70, little griffins, all that lighter stuff can go on this rod. But whatever they did to the Windbuster, where it made it super sensitive for bottom contact, they did the same thing on the baby plugging. In fact, the baby plugging is really the drop shot rod of choice for everybody I know up in the Great Lakes, east coast, north, where you guys are using nose hooks hazardongs, flat worms, all that kind of stuff. If you guys are drop shotting with a nose hook, the baby plugging is money. Once you get just a little bit of load on that tip, it's the crispness, just you feel everything super, super sharp. So it's an amazing stick. It can also manage a lot of the stuff we talked about on the Ageha. If you need to throw that little Okashira head, little spark shad, small little swim bait, it can do all of that stuff really well. But you know, for me, primarily, this is my drop shot rod when I need to use a nose hook. It's just a beautiful, beautiful rod for that. So there you go, number two, the baby plugging. All right, and then number three on my list of most under the radar rods, and I've, I've been trying to make this a not so under the radar rod, but you know, you, you can only say the same thing so many times. Yeah. Until you use a rod sometimes, it's hard to really understand it. This is the Mega Bass Silver Shadow 611 Medium Spin. Now, this rod is 
probably the best rod I have ever used for jerk baits on a spinning rod. Now, I'm not a big fan of jerk baits on a spinning rod. I, I've got all the, all the 110 sticks, right? I've got all the best stuff. I've got great reels, I've got great rods. I just love throwing a jerk bait on a casting rod. But there are times when you just need to throw it on a spinning rod. Maybe it's just super windy. For me, what I utilize this rod for also are things like a little dipper or a small little swim bait on a little ball head, right? This rod super excels at that. It's got just the right amount of give to where you can twitch a jerk bait easily, but you can also cast and fire off a lighter swim bait or something that we will do all the time. This may be just a little bit too light to make long accurate casts on a casting rod. Now, the Ronin really overshadows this rod here. So, you know, everybody kind of knows about the Orochi Ronin and it's an amazing rod built specifically for throwing a jerk bait on a spinning rod. This rod is almost identical to that taper. So if you like that taper on the Ronin, this one is just lighter, it's thinner, it's crisper, gives you a few extra inches, which if you're fishing from a boat, can be nice when you're really trying to cut through the wind and maximize your casting distance. I like the tapered grip. I just like the way it feels. My hand is always on metal, so the sensitivity is super high. It's super clean. And one of the reasons why I think it gets overshadowed is because this rod was actually built to be the Ronin of saltwater. Right? It was built to be kind of the sea bass version of the Ronin. So a guy fishing in Tokyo Bay, for instance, can throw his jerk baits the same way, you know, the guy would be throwing the Ronin out here, right? But ocean, fresh, <laughs> salt, fresh, right? We got to throw all those words out, right? The only difference is this one's silver. No, yeah. that, that's, that's the it. difference. <laughs> that's it, right? So if it was, you know, that kind of snake skin kind of cross woven color, it would be an Orochi, but it's not, it's silver. So it's a silver shadow. <laughs> but if you can look past that, it's a beautiful, beautiful rod. So if you guys like using spinning rods for reaction, I like using spinning rods for small little swim baits, this one is super sick. That's the Silver Shadow 611 Medium Spin. All right, guys, that is a wrap on my three favorite under the radar spinning rods in the Mega Bass line. Hopefully that was fun and insightful. If you guys have questions on any of those rods or any rods we didn't cover, drop it down below in the comments. I will definitely get to it. Jeff will leave links to those rods if you want to check any of them out closer. Until next time, guys, thank you for the support. Thank you for the business. Thank you for the time, and we will see you soon. Peace.